Hi guys, this is Chevin Academy. Welcome to this channel. I'm going to be making a series of videos on Flash Lab Design, but this video is just going to be covering the introduction part. So here we are going to be looking at the various advantage of using Flash Lab over other kind of slab and also some of the design criteria you need to consider when you want to talk about Flash Lab Design. So we all understand that flash lab is considered to be a slab without beams. Generally, we know that in structural engineering, load are transferred from the slab to the beam and then to the vertical members in forms of columns. But in case of a flash lab, we try to avoid having beams. By so doing, this creates a lot of advantage in terms of construction and aesthetically, and then in some cases, in terms of cost. So one of the reasons why you have to consider flat slab is that it reduces the story height. So instead of you having a height of uh, 3 meter adding up with the beam, because there is no beam, so the story height tends to reduce. Then in some other cases, it also simplifies the formwork you use. Because here, all you need is just to have a formwork consisting of your column and then your slab. So there is no need for you to have a formwork especially for the beams then in terms of flash lab no obstruction against lightning and ventilation because in this case you can extend your beam to get to the bottom of the slab just like the second option so windows windows can be extended up to the underside of the slab so these allow for little or no obstruction for lightning and ventilation so, and then based on the research, it has been established that sometimes flat slab can be more economical than the conventional solid slab. Whenever we want to talk about design of slab, one of the things we mention most of the time is moment and shear. So, and then the ability of a slab to resist this moment and shear determines how good this design is. In terms of solid slab, solid slab are predominantly designed to resist moment and then the shear is kept minimal so far there is no concentrated load on the slab. But in form of slab slab, where column will be punching directly on the slab, there is need for us to have a system that is going to resist this shear especially, what we call the punching shear effect of the column on the slab. In order for flat slab to work, we must understand the flat slab system and also some design criteria for all these flat slab terms so flat slab can be constructed in three different phases. we have the one in which the column is connected directly to the the column is connected directly to the slab in this kind of situation the there is tendency of punching effects in which the column is going to be exacting on the supporting slab this makes the slab susceptible to punching shear therefore for as a structural engineer in order for you to use this kind of connection the slab has to be very thick and because of this this can make this type of uh, system non-economical because you can end up with a slab thickness of 250 300 or thereabout but one solution to this is for you to provide a drop panels that is wherever you have the column you try to thicken the slab a little bit so let's say your slab is your normal slab has a thickness of 175. At that region where you have the column, you can in include a drop panel of uh, maybe 100 mm thick so that where we have the column, the slab is going to be having a thickness of 275. So in that kind of situation, we try to avoid uh, the punching effects in which the column is going to impose on the slab. Therefore, this makes your design a little bit more economical. And another way of reducing the punching effect on the slab is by introducing column heads or capital. So this is the third type of flat slab connection, where you have the flat slab connected with column with column heads. The column head is a little bit different from the drop panels because the drop panels is actually attached to the slab. But the column head is attached to the column itself. So this is done in order to reduce the punching effect of the column on the slab. Then one of the most commonly used connection is the combination of both drop panels and column head. So in this system, you try to 
in involve a drop panel that is you taking the slab a little bit where we have the column and also you introduce the column here to the column so this kind of connection is a very perfect one for a flat slab design and then you can incorporate either using flat slab with drop panels or you can combine drop panels with column head in flat slab design so in order for you to select the proper drop panel or the size of drop panel that you need for your flash lab design there are one or two things that you have to consider and that will lead us to the design criteria so in order for you to have a drop panel that will work effectively eh, the drop panel should be as small as small as possible and what we mean by as small as possible is the drop panel it should not be less than one third of the shorter span of the slab connected to the column this is what i mean if you look at this diagram in design of flash lab we usually divide the panel into two strip we have the colon strip and we have the mid middle strip the colon strip is the region where the column is acting and then we tend to and that is where we have the uh, negative moment acting on the slab where the middle strip is where we have the positive moment acting on the slab so this first diagram is showing a connection of a column, a flat slab and a column without any drop panel or column head. So for you to divide it into column strip, where we have the column region, you divide your short span by four. That will contribute to the column strip in both directions. Then your middle strip is going to be what you have left. For example, LX, for this panel, we have LX. Then where you divide your LX divided by two, and then you now share it into two. So this, that means your column strip is going to be LX over two on both sides. Then the same thing happens to both X and Y direction. But whenever you have a drop panel, the drop panel is going to be, cons is going to be used as your column strip. Whenever you have uh, a connection of flash lab and drop panels. So your drop panel will be used as your column strip. But in order for your drop panel to work effectively, the dimension should be more than LX over 3. So when the dimension is less, then it's not going to have as much effect on the design as it should. So according to the BS code, it is stated that the, the drop panel should be ignored. You should ignore the size of the drop panel if it is less than LX over 3. That is the shorter span of this, of the panel divided by 3 or one third of the shorter span so to recap in order for you to select your drop panel your drop panel should be as small as small as possible in order to influence the share and the uh design the design of last lab and then if it is small it should be greater than your shorter span over three it should be greater than your shorter span over three so those are one of the things that you need to consider in deciding the dimension of your drop panels so let's now move to the design criteria for column heads in terms of column head what is important is the effective dimension of the column head this effective dimension is represented according to bs 810 as lh maximum so this lh maximum varies depending on the shape of your column head so when your column head is having a box shape that is is a rectangle or is rectangular as your as your column then in that case this lh maximum has a formula and it is given in the code so when we get to the design phase i'm going to be showing you how you can determine your lh maximum but what is important is in column head, the design criteria for you to choose the effective dimension of your column head is governed by the type of column head. In this figure, the first diagram is showing a wider column head, but you can see that the LH maximum is less than the initial value of the column head. This is because not all part of the column head is actually effective in resisting the shear imposed by the column on the slab then the second dimension is showing a very small column head very small in the sense that 
the effective length dimension of the column head is a little bit bigger than the initial size. Then the third dimension is showing a, a flare type of column. This is kind, kind of forming a circular column head around the slab. So in this kind of situation, for you to determine the effective dimension of your column head, you need to reduce this, uh, you need to offset like, uh, 40 millimeters from the bottom of the slab. And then you now measure from that 40 millimeters to another 40 millimeters. You can see this is the LH maximum. So for you to determine your initial length of the column head. So you need to offset 40 meters, as you can see from this diagram. And then this is what you now use to calculate your LH maximum. The calculation of the LH maximum, that is the effective length of your column head, is dependent on the initial dimension. So the same thing happens to the first diagram. So in our subsequent video where we take examples, you are going to see how we are going to calculate this effective length of the column head. So if you want to see that video and you are, you are yet to subscribe to this channel, I think this is the best time for you to subscribe so that you get more in-depth knowledge on civil engineering and structural design. Before we conclude on this video, I think it would be best if we talk about the design criteria for slab. For a flat slab to be adequate based on the BS code, considering the cover, the fire resistance ability, the size of aggregate and all of that. According to BSC 210, it is stated that the thickness of a flat slab should not be less than 125. So all these are some of the things that you have to consider before you can successfully design your flat slab. You can ask me questions based on what I've explained. If you find one or two things confusing or not clear, leave your question in the comment section. I will try as much as possible to respond to your question and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.